Today's job is going to be another Singer Featherweight. This one happens to be from 1945. It's got the scroll plate on it. And let's take a quick look. So what I'll be doing this morning is I'll just remove all of these plates, the hand wheel and just the bottom plate and take a quick look at everything. So let's get started. It's just a thumb screw that holds on this face plate. Go ahead and take that off. You are seeing this for the first time. Uh, this has just been put away since I bought it. Here's one screw. You can remove the, the spool pin. We can come right over here. You got one screw to get the hand wheel off. But you don't have to take it all the way out. You can just loosen it. 1945, they were putting a chrome plated hand wheel on there. Get that out of the way. I picked this machine up this summer and just put it away until now to have a chance to work on it. Oops! Serial number right there. Looks like the feet on this one are pretty good. Somebody wrote some things on the bottom here. Another thumb screw. Can open this up. Looks like somebody put a felt pad in there. Okay, let me see what you can see here. All right. Got the sun shining in the window this morning. That might be helping. All right, so I'll just grab the hand wheel. Everything's turning freely. You can see it, it has been oiled. Let's go ahead and take the foot off. Put my finger underneath. Push that up. If you lift this and try to take it out, it's going to bind. Here's your bobbin case. I'm just cleaning the machine off with some sewing machine oil, but you can take this one screw out of the casting and loosen the motor and just tip it this way. That way you can clean all these parts. And if you have a, this is the cover for the brush right here. It's a Bakelite uh, cap with a uh, slot in it. If this is extremely tight, be careful. You'll break this or chip it. What I will do is I'll just run a little bit of oil around the edge and let that soak in for a little while and then just work on very gently easing this out. This only needs to be finger tight, nothing more. And then what I'll do is uh, I can get this out and then I'll right away I'll just wipe that oil out off the edge there. I don't want any getting on the brushes or down in that hole where the brush goes. And then what you can do is just pull, pull out your brush, make sure that's getting clean, pull out your brush, and this one, there's more than 50% of that brush is left. It gives me an idea of how much the machine was used. And I'll just take a clean paper towel and just wipe off any of the, any of the um, powder that's on there, carbon powder that's on there from the brush wearing over time. Just make sure the shape of this brush matches the armature when you slide it back in. You can just slide that in and then when you put this back finger tight is plenty tight enough if you watch my other video on what to look for when you buy a singer featherweight here's a, one of the an example of one of the chipped junction boxes that i was mentioning so i've taken this one off the machine and a new one well another a, bit, a good used one will be going back on and then th these wires were frayed here on the ends so the easiest way to remedy that is just get some of this uh, liquid electrical tape and just put a little bit on both of these ends and then wait for it to dry. It doesn't take that long, maybe an hour, and then you'll take care of the frayed ends on this. Right here you can see some semi-circles. There's some on the back end on the front. 
not telling anybody what they should put on their machine. That's totally up to you. I'm gonna rub this around with my finger, with my fingers. You can see we're getting some The semicircles are gone. They did buff out. Then I'll apply a little bit of sewing machine oil to the paint here. Well, here's the end result. After a few applications and some work, I was able to get those semicircles for the most part off the bed of the machine. Just took some sewing machine oil, put it on the machine, and kind of put it back on there. And there it is. Obviously, I'll, after that sits for a few seconds, I'll just wipe off the excess. I did this side over here also. I did go ahead and put a needle in the machine since I have the needle plate out and the feed dogs off and the timing is right on the money. So I can keep cleaning and just continue checking everything on the machine. I also cleaned out these upper gears really well. And then I will just re-oil this and put a little tiny, tiny bit of light grease on there. I, I don't want to slow the machine down in any way by putting a bunch of heavy grease on that. Put this dial, tension upper tension dial, to zero because I want to see if somebody else might have taken this apart and put it back together and not put this in the correct way. But everything looks good here when I go to zero. It's very, very light. I could adjust it out one notch if I want to, simply by depressing this away from the retaining pin and just backing this off and then getting it to pop back onto the wheel, like, the, like right there. Boom, there it is. Okay, now I've taken just a little bit of tension off. I have a, another video that will show you how to do all this if you want to watch that but now it is definitely at zero. There's no resistance. When I take it up to four, keep in mind the presser foot is in the down position, I can feel tension. So I am going to, they were only off by one click. That's not bad there, we're to nothing. Let's see if there's anything we can do for this uh, thread spool holder area. I've gotten quite a bit done on the machine today, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick demonstration of its sewing. I have a size 14 needle in here and some Coates and Clark, Clark thread. I did adjust the bottom tension in the bobbin case. And here we go. I think that's it for today, guys. I got quite a bit done. So as always, thanks for watching. See ya.